Welcome back to another episode of Off Hours with Bourbon Lens. Again, this is our new podcast featuring behind the scenes stories of people in the industry or adjacent to the industry that know and love bourbon and whiskey, but yet they have lives. You may know them as the master distiller or the brand manager or restauranteur, but these are the stories behind them and what they do on their daily lives. And so today, we're going to head up to Maine. You've heard this name mentioned a variety of times, and that's Bob Cutler. Bob is joining us today from Bangor. Bob, how's it going? Is it is it actually warm there or is it cold? It's relatively warm for us. It's uh, 56 degrees. I just checked my Minnie Mouse uh, Apple Watch to, to verify that, but 56 degrees right now in, in Bangor, Maine. So that's, that's short weather. We're good. So when will we get to the 70s in Maine? Um, for about eight to 12 weeks, starting, uh, middle to late July consistently. Okay. We'll get like one offs. Like I think today should get to 70, six, you know, high sixties, low seventies, but then it's going to rain for a couple of days and be back in the sixties. Oh, okay. So consistently end of June for about eight to 12 weeks. So you get what we here in Kentucky call spring for a longer period of time. Yeah. We got some great shoulder seasons. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I love I love a good spring and fall. Not a huge fan of the epic heat, but that's just my personal preference. I just don't like sweating. We get brutal heat two weeks. The first two weeks of July is brutal. And then after that, it's fine. Yeah. Yeah. So. Uh, that, that's good. We get brutal heat from about now until middle of September. It's great for making bourbon. It's perfect for making bourbon. And that is why... We're the bourbon capital of the world. So for those who don't know, Bob is all things whiskey to Maine. I feel like you and Jeff from Stompers. And so let's just start with this question. How did you get into this whole bourbon whiskey thing uh, that, you know, kind of makes up one big portion of your your restaurant? So I, I guess I, I've always said, like, to be inspired and passionate about something, you have to do what you enjoy. You can't do something and be like, I think I can make money at this, uh, so I'm going to do this. Because <laughs> then it's not a, it's it's not true to yourself, and you're never going to be as successful and happy doing it. You may make money on it, but you're not going to be doing it. So when I was when I opened up Novios after about six months of getting our footing and everything, I said, okay, now we need to start running. Where are we going to run to? And I just started looking around and thinking like, oh, I could do this because no one's doing that or that's successful. Other people are doing that. And then I was like, you know what? I just really enjoy having a glass of bourbon in my hand and I really enjoy fine cocktails. So let's just double down and let's focus on that. Mm. And that's what we did. And, you know, when we opened, I think we had six bourbons on our back shelf. And now I think we have 150 ish, 155 different whiskeys. Uh, and a majority of that is is bourbon and and scotch. Yeah. And I'll just be very clear. Bob is more of a scotch drinker than he is maybe a bourbon drinker even. Is that a true statement? Yeah, it changes in the season. I feel like, uh, I don't know, because I was about to say in the warmer weather, I start drinking more bourbon, but I was drinking scotch last night. So <laughs> I, yeah, I guess I would. Yeah. I enjoy scotch. I enjoy the range of scotch too. Mm -hmm. Like you, I enjoy the, 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 the peaty stuff like the Brooklyn and the everything else. And I really enjoy the Highland park and the McAllen, you know, and it's, um, even though Highland will falls in the peat category, it's a different type of peat. It's mm -hmm. more of a, a, I call it like a sweet peat yeah. and it's delicious. Yeah. It's so like the salinity versus often, the like yeah. Lafroigs that are like drinking campfire. Yeah. But there's nothing better than a poor Lafroy with the boys around a campfire or outside on a, you know, a fall night or, you know, anything. It's just, it's perfect. It yeah. just, I, I use the term, it fits my, it fits my hand and it fits my glass. Like it, it's, it just feels right in my hand. And that's. So that's could like. we say it fits like a glove since you are a yeah. former baseball player? Yeah. I, yeah. I, I, uh, I played a lot in high school and I was on a team in college. Um, <laughs> I get that. I know how that feels. Yeah. The, um, I sat the bench for so long and so often that the um, trainer that sat next to me uh, on my left was uh, one of my groomsmen in my wedding four years ago this month. <laughs> that's, that's how long. And he'll tell you that he had more playing time than I did. 
because there were some couple times where somebody got hurt, hit by a pitch, or I mean, people don't get hurt, hurt in baseball, right? You get like jammed up a little. You have, would have to run out on the field just to make sure the cup check was good or whatever. <laughs> and uh, he got more playing time than I did. But oh, come on! You got to do at least the senior day ceremonies. Uh, at ceremonies, yeah, <laughs> yeah. It was a close game, so I didn't get in. Oh man, that coach! That coach is really just kicking you in the hiney on that he, one. He wasn't. He the head coach that was there for my senior year was not the coach that, was not the coaching staff that recruited me my freshman year. Ah, well, that makes so, all the difference in the world. Yeah, it does. and it was actually Coach Novio recruited me, and that's why I named my current restaurant after. And has so. he has he been to the restaurant? Oh yeah, and his daughter actually works for me. She's a nursing student uh, at uh, Husson. So not at University of Maine, but at Huston. So she, she works a couple nights a week on the floor. Nice. Nice. So that's, yeah. that's, I didn't know that story. So that's a even better part of that. And yeah. I was going to say about scotch, even to, to go full circle on that piece, I would say you and one other person are the only reason that I like scotch now. And I will say Bob has been instrumental to the bourbon lens and me in particular in like setting up really great opportunities with um, McAllen. And so I'm very appreciative of Bob. I would say Bob is a close friend and like advisor of the bourbon lens, uh, unofficially without that title being given out. We don't have a board of directors or anything, but we probably should. Um, I can't make any meetings, so I'm happy. Yeah. Bob, Bob's been uh, a big, big help in that way. So, you know, one of the things we were chatting about before we got on here is, you know, you have this bar, you have this concept, but you also have your wife and you have two boys that are, are young yeah. and, and your, your oldest and my son are very close in age. You know, we were, I was just listening to your schedule, like you're running hard. You know, how do you, how do you celebrate those moments in between or those off hours, you know, with your family and how do you prioritize that? I think the big thing is you have to be present in the moment, mm-hmm. right? Like it's, I, my morning starts between six and six fifteen, Um, cause that's when Jack wakes up and I try to take Jack, who's two and a half out of the gate. Um, so I can get some, one, I get some one-on-one time with them, but also that gives Annie a few, another hour, hour and a half of sleep. If Finn, the baby will give it to her. So I try to, I, my morning starts at six. Uh, and I, I get Jack until 9am, uh, 10. Yeah. Um, just a one-on-one time, you know, we try to do breakfast somewhere downtown Bangor or do something else and go to the park and play when the weather is nice or, you know, blocks and all the other things that two and a half year old, uh, (laughs) does. And I try to be responsive in that time to text messages and requests that come in from customers. But at the same time, I try to be present for him because at two and a half, these kids are smart. They know, like he's taken my phone out of my hand and and put it down and said no phone and then like dragged me away from my phone um so he he's smart and he knows like if i'm not paying attention to him to call me out on it and and lock myself back into whatever he's doing and Mm. and celebrate his wins i mean it's stupid but you know he gets excited if he goes up the rock wall without me spotting him or does something else and so you just gotta it's important to be there because my day is backwards for most right people are coming home at four or five o'clock in the evening, that's when I'm, my day is getting busy. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I can't be there five nights a week for bath time and bedtime and everything else and reading in the evening. So I got to use my off hours in the beginning to get that time with him. Yeah. You know, and, and and uh, two and a half is a fun age. It's, it's crazy. It's a blast. It is a blast. And he's so smart. We're in so much trouble. (laughs) Um, he looks like his mom and he's going to be smart like his mom. And I'm just, I'm very grateful for, I'm 47, right? So I'm starting, I'm starting this race late in my life. Yeah. Um, which I think is better for me as an individual, because I, I'm going to be a much better father now than I would have been in my twenties or Mm thirties. It would have been, it would have been, it would have been a train wreck. I couldn't (laughs) even care myself. So it's nice. And I had a different schedule then that wasn't great for, for being a father, but now I can, now I'm also mature enough to lock in that time and say, this is important to me. And, you know, same thing with my time with Annie, like it's, we have time that's blocked because we know, like, if we don't take advantage of that time, we don't get it because if I get home at 11 o'clock at night, she's not up. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, so. I I definitely definitely understand that. Like that's the most important thing is being able to set priorities for your for the things that matter, right? Um, you know the German proverb, keeping the main thing the main thing, right? Yeah, and and that's really hard, right? Because the hustle and bustle of life, and then being a business owner, uh, and not just one business, you also like you have multiple businesses that you you know run. Yeah. And so as, as we, we transition that, like in your off hours, you're also a tinkerer. I like, this is what I like to call you. You're an idea guy. Um, yeah. and a lot of people don't know about this, but you're Alan well, uh, bitters. Um, so like, how did you say, okay, like we're really good in this craft cocktail space. Like what, what kind of drove you to getting into that, um, bitters category? Well, Alan whale was, was, was a company prior to me buying into it. So I bought into it. Um, just over a year ago, mm -hmm. um, bought, a, bought a third of it. And Michael Gatlin, um, who is the founder of that, is probably the one of the best mixologists I know. He is amazing. Um, and when I get stuck on a cocktail, I could call him and be like, Michael, I'm just having trouble with this. This is my recipe. What do I need to do? And he's like, oh, it's out of balance. Adjust your Amaro by a quarter percent or a quarter of an ounce. Adjust your sweetness by a quarter of an ounce. And there you go. You got it. Mm. or he'll change a technique or he'll do something else. And he'll, he just locks in cocktails. He's amazing at it. So he, he creates the bitters. Um, I think what Michael's weakness is, is, uh, communicating about how amazing the bitters are, uh, marketing them and, um, distributing them, mm. uh, and selling them. And I am good in that, um, in that side. Plus I can say like, Hey, this is a, a missing ingredient that's in the field. I would love it if we could create this. Yeah. And, um, and then Michael and I can get together, play with the notes. We can talk about how we would use it in cocktails. Um, and we can create something amazing. And it's, um, we have some things that I'm super excited about, uh, on the horizon. Um, and that's, uh, so I think that side is going to be going great, but that's truly a side hustle. For yeah. Me. That's a side hustle and a passion. You know, it's, you know, within reaching distance, I have seven, seven bottles of bitters, you know, and we're, we have a new bitter coming out today as we're recording this. And it's just, it's super fun. Yeah. And, uh, I would like to say that in an old fashioned, the cherry bitters are perfect. Like yeah, you don't need any of the Manichero, Manichino cherry juice or any of that. Like just drop, you know, a healthy, generous, I I'm a generous yeah. bitter person. Like I'm like five or six on the bitters, like two dashes. Psh, it's nothing. I want to yeah. taste it. I want to taste what I'm putting in my drink. Uh, just like I want to taste my, my rye whiskey or my bourbon that I put in there. Quality ingredients are needed when you're making a cocktail with a quality bake, with a quality backbone. Yeah. You know, and if you're the Allen whale is a craft bitter for craft cocktails is how I like to say. It. So. I, I like it. And, uh, I'm really excited for the blueberry one. I need to, I need to pick your brain about what cocktail can we do with, uh, with a blueberry bitter. Cause that sounds heavenly. I love blueberries. Yeah. Like blueberry flavoring is like one of my favorite flavorings, like blueberry pop tarts, like blueberry, like in cakes. Like I love it. So I'm going to have to pick your brain. I, I can send you some fun whiskey ones, but try it in, uh, a, the next gin and tonic you have. Ooh, uh, I didn't even think about yeah. that. Yeah. That one in the lemongrass are really good in gin and tonics. And then it was funny. I was telling my dad this, that I have a persimmon bitter and I have a persimmon tree in my, my, uh, in my backyard and then they'll come over my aunt and him, they'll come up and they'll pick all the persimmons that have fallen and then they'll make persimmon pudding, which is like yeah. a pie. Uh, and it's kind of disgusting because they stick to my car and it really pisses me off. The pies the, or the fruit, the, the fruit itself off okay. the tree, the pie will probably stick to your like insides and make yeah. you plumper. Right. Cushion. <laughs> yeah. And in the winter in, in Maine, you probably need, you need all the, the, the cushion. Yeah. Yeah. It, I, I, I'm trying to lose my, my, my winter weight right now. You can, you can hide in a sweatshirt and a jacket pretty easily. Oh yeah. Well, that's, uh, that was, that's been like kind of our like off hours thing that we've started in our family is just nutrition. And so Lauren wanted to go on a journey just to like get where she wanted. Uh, she wasn't like, she wasn't unhappy with herself, but she wanted to, to get where she wanted to go. And we hired a nutritionist and like, man, it's changed the whole thing. Like yesterday we were in the kitchen, like we're cooking up, you know, all the meal, all the breakfast and lunch for the week. And I'm measuring food. She's like, I never thought I'd see you measure food in my life. 
Uh, so like, I, I get that you got to find balance and whatever you're going to do. And like, that's family time. Cause Jameson's over here, like dumping like feta cheese all over the place. And it just becomes a, a complete mess, but it's also like really fun. Cause we're all engaged in the process. Yeah. 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 So speaking of at like, my age, I think about, oh, oh go, go ahead. ahead. No, go ahead. I was going to say at my age, I often think about what I'm taking in my body because at 47, you know, Finn, I'm going to be 65 when Finn graduates high school. Going right into Medicare, know, baby. I like I, it. Well, I keep thinking, I'm like, I better take care of myself because I don't want to be like, oh, you're, it's so nice that your grandfather uh, was here for your, you know, <laughs> for high school. And like, oh, that's my dad. Like, so I want to make sure I'm taking care of myself and, you know, I'm taking care of myself for them too. And that's important to do. Yeah. Like it's, and it's choices, right? Every day you make choices about what you're putting in your body. So. Yeah. Well, no, I mean, I, I agree. And I know you're, you're a Peloton rider and I, I am as well. And, you know, nothing like uh, one of those instructors yelling at you to, to go further, faster, harder, because that just yeah. makes the sweat drip off uh, even, even more. Yeah. So, you know, going back to the restaurant, like one of the things like you, you're, you're a mixologist. Like I, I find you a mixologist to myself because you're always talking about your mad scientist of your menu. Like when you're like thinking about all these things, um, because I, I feel like you're talking like me and you talk whiskey and cocktails and all that stuff all the time. So I feel like your mind is in that even in your off hours, like when you're thinking of cocktails, like how does that come up? How does that process kind of play out in your every day? Is it like, Hey, you tasted something you like, you know, kind of like this idea and you want to put it out or like, how does that ideate into what ends up being your cocktail menu menus for a season or for a time? So we, we have, 20 cocktails that are live at all times and the cocktails change four to eight times a year, depending on season. And, and right now what you can get, like a lot, oftentimes you, you run out of ingredients and just not available in the state anymore. So we kind of keep like a mental Rolodex of reps come in, just like these people send you samples reps come in and we'll sample us out on Amaro's or liqueurs or anything else. And we just kind of keep a Rolodex, what we like, what we don't like. And then we start looking, you know, how many cocktails do we need? What categories do we need? What backbones are we looking for? And what kind of Amaros and liqueurs are we trying to highlight? And we just kind of work it in. And then like right now we have some swizzles on, Mm. we have a cheeky drink on, we have, um, you know, a couple other things and we just kind of work around and try to figure out what's in what category and simples and syrups and everything else try to make it all work yeah. and then we do it we write it all out we start tasting it and then we realize we're nowhere and we're at square one and we kind of start over cocktail by cocktail and recreating it and it's not uncommon for us to be like this is a tequila cocktail we're really excited about and by the time it's done it's a bourbon cocktail <laughs> um and one ingredient that's same oh they both have peach in it yeah you know that's it but it's a completely reworked cocktail. I do love peaches, peaches. It's yeah. peach season. Um, you know, the Georgia peach truck shows up in Kentucky and you can get fresh peaches. And, uh, I'm big, big fan of that. It's just a good flavor. Yeah. Uh, I, I threw that out cause we have a drink that we're working on right now. That's peach. And ooh, nice. We're Courtney and I are at different ends of which way we want to go with the cocktail. So we have to hash that out on Wednesday. A peach smash is also just a good quality, uh, bourbon, drink. Yeah. Yeah. I I'm had a, a few of those. I'm a fan of peach and, and, and bourbon. I think it's, it works. It works well. Yeah. And I think, you know, just to go on this tangent for a second, I think you want to low rye bourbon with that. Cause you want to bring out like more of those mapley dark notes versus yep. a higher rye, which is going to give you like spearmint citrus and all that. You want to downplay all that as much as possible. Courtney's going to be so excited you just said that because she wants to use taconic uh, maple mm. peach. So she wants to use a, you know, a, a go a different way with it. Yeah. I just feel like it's. That might be overkill. I, I, I think you're crossing seasons. I think it's like half fall, half spring and that and everything else or summer. And it's crossing seasons. I will say we, we did it her way and it was delicious. <laughs> I would consume, consume it like crazy. Yeah. Um, you know, I'm just trying know, to, I'm, and, I'm, and as a leader, you have to say like, sometimes you, 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 I just let Courtney run with it. There's 22 cocktails. Yeah. You know, she, she's been with me for five years. Let her have, 
you know, a third of them. Who cares? I don't have, you know, not every cocktail person that comes in is going to have the same preference of cocktails I have. Yeah. Um, if you come to my house for a a campfire or a barbecue or anything else, and you don't like spirit forward bitter cocktails or in the summertime, orange wine and rosé, I would strongly encourage you to bring something Yeah, because that's all I'm going to have. <laughs> um, and you know, or a gin and tonic, there's always amazing gin and amazing tonic in my house, but that's, there's nothing else, you know? And, and, um, and my friends know kind of like, if you're looking for a margarita and you go to Bob's house, you may want to bring your own. Yeah, It's not, it's not going to be something that I have available for you. You could probably do a bourbon Rita though. I could. Yeah. If, if I chose to, but at my house, there's not a lot of citrus in my cocktails ah. because it, do you ever get in a situation where you have like friends over for the Super Bowl, yeah. right. Or anything else. I used to always end up making drinks and missing three fourths of the party or three fourths of the game or anything else. Cause all I was doing was making cocktails. Mm. Uh, so I am big into the batched cocktails and everything is batched before anybody comes in. And there's a label on it that tells you what it is and how to make it. And if it's, if we're outside, I fill a bird bath with ice and I put all the cocktails in there Yeah. and you go over and you pour it yourself. Mm. Um, and it's done. Yeah. So because I pre batch, oftentimes there's no citrus in it, um, for shelf life. And so it's, you know, a lot of Manhattans, a lot of Boulevard days, a lot of Negronis, a lot of, you know, yeah. bitter, delicious cocktails. Yeah, no, I get that. And, uh, you know, the crazy thing is, this is where we may, we may just disagree because I don't really care for those types of, I don't, I don't like Manhattans. I just can't do it. Just vermouth and me are not friends. Just not, not ever going to happen. Maybe you're drinking the wrong vermouth. Challenge accepted. I'm sending you a Manhattan in the mail. <laughs> All right. Done and done. There is uh, one of the, the whiskeys I was telling you, I was going to send you actually uh, is desserty enough to be that way. So uh, I'll, I'll send you, you know, some samples back your way. Um, like I mentioned earlier that I think you could just pour some of these over ice that I might send you, awesome. but anywho, enough, enough talk about work, you know, other things that you like to do in Maine, like you love football. I know that's a yeah. big thing, baseball, obviously, but what, what else is, you know, in these seasonalities, especially in the spring, when you could spring summer ish, we'll call it uh, together springmer <laughs> when you, when you get that together, um, like what are your, your hobbies that you all are doing outside other than, you know, when, cooking when and grilling? Yeah. When I'm not with my family, um, uh, I try my best to carve out some time to go fishing. Mm. Um, and I usually go with Jeff who, who we've talked about a little bit, Jeff and I will carve out time, go fishing and we fly fish. We'll do some small brooks or streams. Um, I know this Labor Day weekend, we're going to go, uh, fish up in a moosehead lake, uh, spend a weekend up there fishing. There's something to be said about the cell phone, not being able to work. Yeah. Um, having a plan and just starting your morning with a, an amazing cup of coffee, some quiet time, an hour long in a truck with one other guy where you're barely talking to each other and then fishing and you're a hundred yards or 40 yards or however many yards away from the next person. And it's completely quiet. Maine is such a beautiful, beautiful state. And, um, if you, all you do is work and all you do is, you know, when your kids are older, shuffle them back and forth to sporting events, you forget how beautiful the state is. Mm -hmm. Um, so I really try in, in, in the short weeks that we have of good weather, um, to go fishing. I, I really try to carve out a couple weekends where I can, you know, spend some time with the line in the water. And even if I don't catch it, I'm not a good fisherman. I went too many years of working and not and not finding time for myself that I've lost a lot of skill. Mm. Um, and I'm trying to get it back and I want to get it back. Cause that's something I want to be able to do with my boys later. Yeah. Um, and you know, so they can appreciate that aspect of living in Maine. It's not an easy state to live in. Yeah. You know, it, it's five months out of the year. It's very cold and very challenging to move around and very challenging to do things unless you're a skier or an ice fisherman or something else mm -hmm. or a snowmobiler. Um, I am none of those things. I am. You <laughs> so know, are your boys going to know how to mend? Cause damn it. Herb yeah. can't do it. Herb cannot mend. You know, the boys will definitely, they'll have a better mend than I will. Cause they'll be 
taught and I will, that, that is when I'll have more time to fish when I can get those boys to fish. Yeah. Um, so that'll be fun. I'm looking forward to that. Yeah. Uh, so... And then in the fall, I spend, you know, a lot of time at main football games, Yeah. you know, tailgating. I, I, once a year I'll do like a real big tailgate. Uh, and the rest of the time I kind of bounce around a, you know, I just kind of don't have a plan. I just go out to the parking lot. I find people I know and hang out with them, eat their food, have their drink, move on to somebody else's tailgate, bounce around. And then I usually have very good seats or standing room for those games. And I love that. And yeah. Uh, and bounce out at, you know, and go to work after, after halftime or third quarter and start my day that way. Sounds, sounds like a great day to me. Uh, in all yeah, honesty. it's, it's great. Main football is a ton of fun. It's just a community supported event. Yeah. Hockey games are wild up here. I, but they play at seven o'clock on Friday and Saturdays and it yeah. doesn't work for me. <laughs> nope. Uh, nope. and Maine, was- Maine is really good at hockey. Very, uh, we used to be very, very good except, I mean, multiple national championships. Yeah. Um, now we are rebuilding for the past decade, but we're going to get there. Well, I mean, it seems like they at least make the the tournament every most years. Maybe I'm missing, but I, I feel like Maine no. wasn't was in. We're in the we're in the we're in the conversation. We've been we've been bad for a while, but we're gonna we're gonna get better. I mean, I, I believe you're so close to Canada. Everyone should be saying a and be ready to roll. <laughs> well, we you and if you're a Canadian, you can come to Maine and pay in state tuition, which really helps in recruiting because if there's a balance between scholarship and tuition, it's less than if you went to like BC and you have to pay international prices. There we so go. that's kind of helpful. Look at that. We're recruiting Canadians to Maine, uh, to go be a bison and, uh, <laughs> here on the bourbon. That's, and now on the portal, you can just go anywhere after a year. So so no matter. freaking kidding. So we're closing up here at this time. Uh, I have two things left. One, yeah. I think one of your really good qualities is barrel picking. You all have picked some amazing barrels of whiskey and in particular Wyoming. So like, I feel that like you have this affinity, uh, you know, obviously through scotch and, you know, we didn't even touch on the whole Edrington thing, but you know, you've connected with David, um, De, uh, DeFazio of, of Wyoming whiskey and, and really, you know, had some, I would say some of the best barrel picks, I've had just in general, I think you all have done a really good job. You know, how does that fit into your, you know, relationship building with these other brands and being able to curate really great whiskey for your, you know, patrons, you know, enjoy. Yeah. So barrel picks are interesting, right? Because, uh, in Maine, not a lot of on-premise restaurants do barrel picks. Uh, it's a lot of off-premise liquor stores. So I have to fight very difficult or very hard fights to get, even in line to get a pick. So this year we have two, we have one with Wyoming whiskey and uh, in November we're picking one with Buffalo trace or of Buffalo trace with the Sazerac company. Um, so, and we're actually going to Kentucky for that. So I'll give you those dates. Um, but um, it's birthday time for uh, Bob and I. Yeah. So it's, um, it's one, I think when you do the remote picks and they send you the samples, um, they, I think it's almost like you're getting a second tier pick, right? When you go somewhere, like we go to Wyoming to do our picks, I think they show off a little bit more and they give you a wider range and more to pick from. When you pick, I assume you're picking and you're looking for either the most original out of what you have in front of you or you're, or you're looking for the best of whatever it is, if they're all the same. I approach it from more of a cocktail perspective. And I'm looking for something that works in a cocktail based upon the season that it's being released. So I'll look at it and be like, oh my God, this one is great. The one we just released last month is great in um, my spring cocktails and especially in uh, mint juleps. Mm. And that's why I, I picked that one where the one I picked in November, more baking spice and everything else was better for my winter cocktails. Yeah. Um, so I pick kind of backwards in that. But yeah, it's, we're treated very well. I feel like, and even the opportunity to get those I'm thankful for. Yeah. And then as far as getting the bottles of things, like we, you know, I I'll send you pictures of bottles and you're like jealous. I'm like, yeah, it's a different thing. (laughs) Um, I, I think a lot of times when, if you're, we're to a place now where if I don't have your bottle of something, even if it's your entry level thing, your small batch, your single barrel, your whatever it is. Um, 
it's because I've chosen not to have it. So if you don't offer it to me, the assumption is I don't like it and I don't want it. And that's the assumption that my, my best customers take from it. So we, we, if the bottle is in the state of Maine, it is uncommon for us not to have the opportunity to get it unless it goes into the lottery, Yeah, which there's an adjective before lottery, which I, but you know, so a lot of like the Pappies and the Sazerac 18 and stuff like that, that I used to be able to get every single year is now going to, uh, whoever Bert on secondary, uh, after they buy it. At cost. Yeah. Uh, m- most likely it's a lot of them are going to secondary. A lot of them are going to bar owners who, you know, give them away as wedding gifts, <laughs> you know, and then it ends up on secondary and versus here. You know, Pappy is done at the normal markup as every other bottle that costs $40, yeah. you know, and it's like it, we, we limit it to one pour per person per visit, you know, per night type thing. And we want as many people to try it. It shouldn't be this hard to enjoy it and see if you enjoy it. And, and then you also can compare it to something else and see if it's really that great. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm all, I'm all for that one. You know, my, uh, my rule is if I get it, unless I have a podcast coming up, it's open. And yeah. if it's uh, open, you can drink it. I will get the first pour of everything in my house. But other than that, I, you know, if you came to my house and you're like, hey, that bottle, is it open or not? And I'm like, if it's open, grab it, drink it. Yeah. Bottles are made to be replaced, but bottles are more importantly made to be shared. And that's just memory, the right? Yeah. I mean, memory. I would much rather talk about the times I shared a pour with someone than the times we just talked about a a closed bottle. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. I'm with you. hundred percent. hundred percent. I told Billy that I gave Billy a Pappy bottle and he, uh, my father-in-law and he didn't open it for two years. And I finally told him like, I'm sick and tired of this. Like, I'm not going to give you any more nice bottles. Let's open it. Let's drink it. Let's talk. Yeah. And and we did it over Easter and it was perfect. It was great. Exactly. And and Billy went overboard one time. (laughs) God bless him. (laughs) Uh, your father-in-law is great. But my, my last question, and, and this is our, our theme of, you know, kind of to everyone is, is this. And I think every, every guest after these first few episodes will be like, I got to prepare for this. Uh, what's your one advice to get, get off the grid, get off hours and, and take that break? What would you give, like, what's your piece of wisdom or advice to, you know, dads, restauranteurs or business owners to, you know, take that time for themselves? I, I think uh, for me, I would tell people you have to take the time for the things that you matter the most. So turn your phone off, take off your Apple watch and lock in and be present for whatever you need to be present for. Um, if it's your, you know, date night with your wife, don't spend date night on your phone. I can't tell you how many people come to our nice restaurant and both people are sitting on their phones across from each other. I want, I, I want to scream. I'm just like, there's no way you're enjoying yourself. Don't go out. That's the case. Stay home and watch Wheel of Fortune. But when you're with that person, like lock into what you're doing and, and enjoy that time with that person. Yeah. Um, There's nobody uh, there. Was there a country music song or someone that said nobody on their gravestone says, I wish I would have worked more. Yeah. Like if you got to enjoy your time when you're not working, because it's, it's important. This is how I, my business is how I support my family and, and how I provide for them. But I can't just be that. I need to be, you know, I need to go down the slide with Jack and I need to, you know, hold Andy's hand walking, you know, through the grocery store and I need to do, you know, everything else. And I, if you can't do those things and be present for those things, then you're failing everything. Every other thing that you think is important in your life, you're failing all of those things. Um, and you'll be a better business person and you'll be a better bartender. You'll be a better everything else if you're a well-rounded person. Because the more exposure you have to things, the more joy you have in your life, the better you are at your life. Mm. Well said. It's a, long, it's a long fortune cookie thing, but it's there. No, I like it. I, I really appreciate that. And uh, it's always good to you know, hear people's perspective, right? You've, you've done a lot of things and lived a few different lives in your, your work cycle. And, you know, and now you have this budding family and all those things. So it's it's a lot of great wisdom. So I I really appreciate that for anyone who wants to find out more about Bob and Novios Bistro, check them out on Instagram, Novios Bistro at Novios Bistro. And it was just recently named open tables, like top restaurant in the Northeast, right? Something like that. Yeah. 
uh, they loop us into Boston, yeah. New England, Boston. So yeah, number one in New England, Boston. That's that was nice. That was yeah. a good day. We gave each other high fives, and that was it. Did you drink champagne? <laughs> we we I don't think there was. I think it was when it list came out. It came out right before service, ah. and we were literally like, "Oh shit, that happened!" <laughs> and then and then we kind of got into service, and you know we. We have a vacation coming up. It's uh, I'll make sure everybody feels awarded because it's it's a team effort. It yeah. really is a team effort. It's it's a it's a great team. I have the best team here. That's best awesome. team at home. Best team at work. I'm happy. There you go. Then you can stack hands on that. Well, again, yeah. check them out on Instagram at Novios Bistro. Uh, Bob does a lot of great things. And if you go up to Bangor, make a reservation uh, well in advance so you can get that table there at Novius yeah. for, for dinner. Thanks, everyone, for listening to this episode of Off Hours with Bourbon Lens. You can check us out on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook at Bourbon Lens. You can find more about Off Hours at Drink Off Hours on their social medias. And until next time, cheers. Cheers. Cheers.